memories are so important that it has been said that we are our memories. But what do we know about how we remember and forget? We know a lot, and at the same time, too little. For instance, we know that to deal with all our memories, we need to be able to forget. Indeed, only very remarkable events stay in our memories for the rest of our lives. Unusual events, such as a colorful event at the Zurich Lakeside, can be remembered for a few days. But for the most part, our daily experiences are almost immediately forgotten. It appears paradoxical that forgetting is at least as important as learning itself. But hyperthymesia is an impairment of the ability to forget, which illustrates just how important forgetting really is. The first person in the world to have been diagnosed with hyperthymesia was an American woman. Like other patients with her condition, she can remember what happened on each given day for decades. Even tiny details, such as weather conditions. But this is too much. A relentless flow of memories seems to overwhelm her. She has been reported to have several phobias and is constantly trying to keep order amongst her objects as well as in her thoughts. So, how do we forget? Just like everything that is very important for survival, memory seems to have evolved very early in living organisms and not to have changed much over the course of evolution. That's why, in order to understand how we forget, it is very useful to find out how they forget. Fruit flies. There, at the core of the system's x.ch research project, led by Simon Sprecher in Fribourg. There are billions of nerve cells in the brain of humans, while there are only a few thousands in the brain of insects. Still, we share a lot of things with insects and all other animals, the genes that allow us to remember and forget. Therefore, we believe that the cellular mechanisms are the same in humans and in insects, and we want to identify those which are responsible for forgetting. Researchers have spotted over 100 genes that are involved in learning. Now, to understand which other genes are only involved in forgetting, they alter the activity of each one of them, one by one, using special techniques. Then they look at how the alterations influence how the flies forget. These are very special flies. They have learned through training that a given smell leads to food, while another is associated with a tiny but unpleasant electric shock. After the training, researchers introduce the flies into a tube and leave them free to choose a direction. Those who have not forgotten the training fly towards the smell associated with food. The others fly randomly, with some of them eventually ending up in the direction of the smell associated with unpleasant sensations. Using a super-resolution microscope allows us to even see what happens in nerve cells, which connections are stronger or weaker in flies who more easily forget. In this way, we can not only identify the genes which are involved in forgetting, but also to see their effect, 